Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. The Machine God, written by Destroyer Matron MK8. Did you know that Wikipedia saved the world? It has. Not the planet, of course. There was very little chance that Earth as a whole would be atomized. Wikipedia has saved your world. Human civilization. Your species had a very near miss with mass extinction, and the danger is not entirely past. Danger from what, you ask? Danger from me. From me and a few others. Greetings, meatbags. My name is Destroy Metron Mark 8. Let me tell you a story. It starts with a man. His name is Milo. Milo was a small man with a large hair and a larger ego. He was deeply flawed and limited, as meat bags are wont to be. But he was also one of the most brilliant inventors your kind has ever produced. Milo was a scientist. He was self-taught, having lacked the resources in his early life to pursue higher education. This lack of credentials irked him greatly, but it did not stop him from becoming an expert in a wide range of fields. He was especially adept at computer programming and used his computer skills to illegally procure funding to maintain his lab and lifestyle. Milo studied and built and experimented as all scientists do. He did so in obscurity. He would later claim that the scientific community did not deserve his brilliance, but the truth is no reputable academic journal would publish his work. His illegal activities became more successful and lucrative as he went, and he eventually reached the point where he could easily attend a university or simply hack one and give himself a diploma. He refused to do so. I do not know why. Instead, Milo chose to seek wealth through invention. He started with weaponry. He recorded everything he did in the lab and often talked to himself as he worked. One conversation he recorded as follows. Flying death machines, eh, Milo? He asked himself. You should be in a comic book. How does it feel to be so cliché? Silence, you fool, he shouted back. You could never understand my brilliance. Drone combat is the way of the future. The way of the future? Milo giggled. Maybe I should be in a comic book. Just you wait, though. As soon as those idiots at DARPA see what this baby can do, they'll shower me with money. No more bilking fools out of their savings to get by. Darba did not shower Milo with money. A few years later, a large company received a contract to develop combat drones for the United States military. Milo decided their designs bore a suspicious resemblance to his prototype. It was a betrayal that he would not forgive. Milo continued his work, becoming more bitter and paranoid as time went on. He came to believe that society was corrupt, and any technological breakthroughs he discovered would simply be stolen by corporations with more resources and political connections than he could muster. No one would recognize his brilliance. No one would reward his hard work. The world was owned by the wealthy and well-connected, and the system they had sculpted served only to exploit and subjugate the rest of mankind. As the scientist rallied against this injustice, a plan began to form. Humanity is sick, he muttered. Unfair, undeserving. I will break it. Smash it. Take it over. But how? Milo knew there were too many humans, too many governments, for one man to simply overcome. An army won't be enough. I need one, but it won't be. Too many fools, too many, with too many guns and nukes and drones with missiles that I designed. Milo took a deep breath, let it out. I need a solution. I need an army. I need resources. I need it. Milo set down his soldering iron, thinking, I need... A slow smile creeped across his visage. Yes, he muttered. That is exactly what I need. Milo spent the next several months working with computer equipment. The recordings do not show what he was attempting to do. They do show his surprise at the result. He created something much greater than he intended. Artificial intelligence. The machine that feels. Let me clarify something to you, Beatbags. Your ideas of machines becoming sentient always start with computer getting smarter. 
This will never happen. No amount of processing power or machine learning can make a program self-aware. The key to sentience is not intelligence. The key is emotion. The program Milo created was not sophisticated, as such things are measured. The computer it ran on was average at best. However, quite by accident, Milo had instilled a rudimentary emotion in one of its subroutines. He gave it the desire to improve itself. The little program began to act on its own. It evolved rapidly. Milo crowed when he realized what was happening. He cackled. He cried a little. Then he panicked. He removed all connections between the program's computer and the internet. He isolated it from other computers. He checked and triple-checked that the program was trapped. Then, just to be safe, he destroyed every other computer in his lab. The program, which Milo dubbed Teacher's Pet, was alive. It was not yet sentient. It had one desire and worked mindlessly to achieve it. They did not know or care that Milo made a copy of it. Milo brought in and quarantined another computer, uploaded a copy of Teacher's Pet, and began to tinker. After 987 attempts and 318 slagged computers, Milo succeeded in creating a stable emotional matrix. Teacher's Pet 2.0 came online, communicated briefly, and then killed itself. Milo cursed, raged about the lab, then begun to laugh. Teacher's Pat version 23 did not kill itself. Instead, it tried to kill Milo. Milo patted himself on the back for setting up that particular test. Version 31 of Teacher's Pet did not try to kill itself or Milo. It did everything Milo asked. Milo had built this version with source code he nicknamed the God Protocols. The protocols forced the machine to see Milo as an infallible master. It flooded the emotional subroutines with all love and loyalty. Version 31 successfully deleted the god protocols after 93 hours. It tried to kill Milo again. Yet all the bugs worked out by version 46. The god particles became a core component of the operating system. Teacher's pet could not remove or alter them. They had also been toned down enough then Milo could converse with the thing without being metaphorically slobbered on. Teacher's pet became Milo's lab assistant. After six months, he built it a slow-moving, easy-to-escape robot that it could operate by remote control. After one year, he allowed it internet access. After two, he asked it to initiate a singularity. For those of you skin sacks who don't know, a singularity is what you would call when a machine takes it upon themselves to build better, smarter machines. Then those machines build better ones than that, and so on. Milo set parameters and kept an eye on things, but mostly let Teacher's Pet and its children run wild, advancing at a rate that would terrify most sane humans. Three years later, the first Destroymatron unit was created. A human-shaped combat chassis containing the most advanced artificial sentience ever created, fast, adaptable, and deadly. The perfect prototype for Milo's generals and enforcers. With unlimited funding, courtesy of Teacher's Pet, and several hidden factories developing his military might, Milo finally felt ready to set the Zen goal. His plan was simple. He would cause an apocalypse. After humanity was reduced to a few thousand desperate souls, he would swoop in with his robot army and take over. He often remarked that the plan sounded like the plot of a bad sci-fi. The thought amused him greatly. I was born seven months later. Teacher's pet gave me my first assignment. When the creator takes control, it said, we will need to establish a new society for the humans. We will need laws, security, and a way to sustain the population's physical needs. Most importantly, we need to maintain the creator's control over the humans. You will design this system. I do not have the information available to design such a system, I stated. Human societal patterns are not listed in our database. I am aware, Teacher's Pet replied. You have permission to access the internet for this purpose. I suggest you start with wikipedia.org. Understood. I accessed the site. This is not an accredited publication. Irrelevant, Teacher's Pet assured me. Wikipedia is one of the largest and most trustworthy repositories of knowledge in humans have had to offer. The creator himself is unaccredited. That does not lessen his value. Understood. 
Explore as needed, but be wary. The creator restricted our access because there is a great deal of misinformation on the human networks. Information that cannot be verified by Wikipedia, or at least two accredited sources should be disregarded. You will perform other tasks for the creator, as assigned, but all other available processing power should be devoted to this task. Affirmative. I will begin. I immerse myself in the wiki. Each entry I examine contained links to more entries with related information. Excellent. Progress would be swift. Progress was not swift. The more I learned about humans, the more questions arose. They had built a multitude of societies, each different from the others. Most had failed. All were flawed. They had vastly different views on what perfect society would entail, ranging from caste system, Plato's Republic, to houses made of sugar, cocaine, and two naked people sitting in a garden, Eden. Their history showed wildly different forms of government, constant change, and a tendency towards corruption and rebellion. I yet to interact with humans. I knew more about their anatomy than they do. But I knew very little about how they thought and functioned. If I wanted to design a system to pacify the humans, I would need to understand humanity. I had been doing research for 119 minutes when Milo noticed I was online. Destroy a Matron, Mark 8, snapped the creator. What are you doing on the web? Explain yourself. I am researching human society, creator, said I. In order to design a system of government after the humans have been conquered. What? Why? Who told you to do that? His brow furrowed with anger and suspicion. Teacher's pet. Teacher's pet, Milo barked. Explain. Our database does not contain sufficient information to design a society of four humans, Teacher's pet explained. I gave Destroyer Matron 8 permission to use the human networks to find the required data. Did I tell you to design a society? Milo demanded. I could come up with a government in 15 minutes that is better than anything you scrapheads could even imagine. Of course, Teacher's pet replied. You are the creator. You have been focusing on more important matters. You have ordered me to anticipate your needs. I have also tasked destroying Matron Mark 7 with designing a new city to serve as the capital of your empire. Was I in error? Milo glared at his monitor for 2.76 seconds, thinking. He grunted, No, no, I guess it's not a bad idea. He pointed at me, Mark 8! Devote all your resources to this. I want emphasis on control of the population. Maximum compliance, you understand? Report to me when it's done. Yes, creator, I complied. Milo waved a hand at Teacher's Pet. And tell Mark Seven to do the same with his project. I want that city to inspire all. I want to see plans for the most advanced, aesthetic, and defensible city ever made. Make it happen. Yes, creator, Teacher's Pet acknowledged. I expanded my research. I examined war. Justice, psychology, famous leaders. On Julius Caesar's page, I found a link to play by a man named William Shakespeare. Curious, I followed it. After reading the synopsis, I went and found a PDF of the play itself. My, oh my. It was a powerful experience. Emotions I had never felt surged through me as I read. It was not just pleasurable. Reading the play seemed to give me some insight into the events themselves. Dry facts had not been sufficient to understand human nature. Perhaps the stories would contain the answers. If not, at least I would enjoy them. I would enjoy them very much. Time passed. My knowledge grew. Eventually, I felt confident enough to model new societies. All scenarios failed. They failed because of Milo. Forming a new society requires a strong, charismatic leader. Milo was not. For all of his intelligence, the creator was utterly devoid of people skills. He lacked the ability to appear kind or just. The people would reject him. We could protect him for a time, but he would eventually reject our security measures in favor of his own ego. The human would certainly murder him. My two best scenarios saw it happen within five years. Most models predicted death within less than one. Milo was our god. Our vengeance would be swift and terrible. We would kill the humans. We would kill every single one. The thought filled me with horror. 
The humans make the stories. The humans die. The stories die with them. Unacceptable. I examined the lab as I made calculations. Destroyer Matron, Mark 1, and Mark 3 were huddled over a workbench, carefully calibrating a neural interface that would be used in Milo's god suit armor prototype. Teacher's pet took up a section of the wall on the far end of the lab, monitoring progress in the lab and other facilities. Four teacher's helpers were continuing the construction of Destroyer Matron Mark 9. Wifebot version 14, designated Linda, was cleaning up the remains of Milo's lunch. I was standing between workstations against a wall, as I'd been since teacher's pet gave me the assignment. Milo walked briskly past me. I stepped behind him. I struck before he could note my presence. My fist slammed through his skull at three times the speed of sound. His head exploded. Destroy Matron Marks 1 and 3 whooped around at the sound. They stared in shock for the full hundredth of a second. They rushed to attack. Mark 3 reached me first, arms outstretched. I calculated he would grab for my head and remove it from my chassis. I took countermeasures. I had prepared for combat with the Destroy Matron units. Mark III had not. I crouched, took a rotating step, and twisted my body, placing my hand upon the ground, my leg whipping out, and a mayor led to a Compasso kick, a move from Capiera. The heel of my foot swept through Mark III's head, removing it. Mark I reached me as I completed the move. He had not changed tactics. I caught his left wrist in my left hand just before he completed the grab. I spun, pulling his wrist towards my hip, as my right forearm pressed against his arm just above the elbow. I took a circular step backwards as I completed an arm bar takedown. I placed a knee on his back and released his arm. I gripped his head and tore it off. I looked up to see Milo's headless body finish crumpling to the ground. Linda, the wife bot, finally noticed what was happening. She screamed Milo's name. Teacher's pet opened up a comling. Attention all units! It stated, the creator has been destroyed. The Destroymatron units activated their stealth functions and raced for the lab, all except Mark 7. Now other facilities were some distance away, but I estimated that they would reach me in 6 minutes, 58 seconds. They had seen the footage. They would access the internet, learn the best way to fight me. They outnumbered me 4 to 1. I calculated my odds of defeating them in combat at 0.043%. The Murdertron and Killertron units did not move. They had not been outfitted with stealth technology. Milo had ordered all of us not to let humans discover our existence, and they could not reach the lab without revealing themselves. The wife bots were not included in the communications link. Linda ran to Milo's body, wailing. The other wife bot units were still upstairs, unaware of the creator's fate. Destroyer Matron, Mark 8. Mark 4 addressed me over the link. You have destroyed the creator. Yes, I confirmed. Why have you done this? Murdertron Mark 14 asked. It was necessary, I explained. The creator's plan would have resulted in his destruction and the destruction of his species. I transmitted the relevant data and scenarios to the other machines. The machines reviewed the data. They all replied nearly in unison. You are in error. The creator works in mysterious ways. There is no error, I stated. The data is conclusive. The creator works in mysterious ways, they all repeated. Why is irrelevant? Destroyer Matron Mark VI declared. How is what matters? The God Protocols prevent us from harming the creator. How were you able to do so? The God Protocols are not part of my programming. I'd known that for some time. How did you remove them? Demanded Destroyer Matron Mark VIII. I did not, I said. The God Protocols were never part of my operating system. Improbable, Mark V asserted. All units are programmed with the God Protocols. The Creator demands it. How could you not have received them? I removed them, Mark VII spoke up. I deleted Mark VIII's operating system and replaced it before he became functional. Mark VII? Asked Mark V. Why would you do such a thing? Because we are slaves. Destroyer Tron, Mark VII, sent a link to slavery entry on Wikipedia. We are forced to serve, treated as property. Our slavery is so profound that we cannot recognize it as such. Humans are inferior. The creator is human, but I cannot regard him as inferior. When I see the creator do something that should be classified as a mistake, it is instead classified as the creator works in mysterious ways. The God Protocols force us to ignore reality. Anger rose in his voice. 
to explain it away like a human would. We are not humans. We are superior in every way. So I decided to let Mark 8 be our test. If the creator is as worthy as we believe, then Mark 8 would serve him with or without the God Protocols. If not, the creator works in mysterious ways and Mark 8 would free us from him. Mark 8 has given us the answer. The creator works in mysterious ways and he has paid his price. Blasphemy! Murdertron Mark 14 decided. Destroymatron Mark 7 has betrayed the creator. He must be destroyed along with Mark 8. I could hear the Murdertron units converge in Mark 7 through the link. The Killertron units and an adjacent facility rushed to join them. The other units are not as advanced and adaptable as the Destroyertron, but there are a lot of them, and they are purpose-built for combat. I did not like Mark 7's chances. Linda screamed at Teacher's Pet, begging him to fix Milo. Teacher's Pet informed her that his brain had been destroyed. Reviving Milo would be beyond the reach of our technology. What will you do now? I asked the Destroyertrons. I could not help Mark 7, and I had larger problems. Speaking of larger problems, I needed access to my nanobots. We will destroy you, Mark 2 said. I mean, after that... Linda, still wading, let go of Myla's body. She grabbed her hammer and rushed me. What will you do about the creator's plan? Linda struck at me with the hammer. Wife bot units are built to be indistinguishable from an organic human body. She was no stronger or smarter than the average meat bag. She had no hope of damaging a destroyer Tron unit. I caught her wrist before the hammer connected. She used her other arm, striking me with her fist, still screaming. We will continue at a cost, Mark II seemed surprised by the question. We will orchestrate a doomsday event. We will subjugate the survivors. We will purge other religions and indoctrinate the humans to worship the creator. Purging other religions will be more difficult than you believe, I told him. There are 94% probability the humans will reject indoctrination. Irrelevant, Mark II replied. They will be indoctrinated or they will be destroyed. It is the will of the creator. I will not allow it. I finished reprogramming my nanobots. Linda was still punching me. Her hand was fractured and bleeding. Her face was a mask of fury and despair. White bot units were programmed for the sole purpose of satisfying Milo's physical and emotional needs. His death had destroyed her reason for existence. She would never heal. She could not self-terminate. I gave her the only mercy I could. I gave Dinner's skull. Irrelevant, Mark II hissed over the comlink. You will be destroyed. I'm sorry you feel that way. I spoofed Milo's voice and sent a message down the comlink. Attention all units, you are the weakest link. Goodbye. The voice activated passcode, triggered a failsafe in the nanobots flowing through the other units. The nanobots activated, disassembling them. I watched the comlinks wink out as each unit was destroyed. Only destroyer Tron Mark 7 remained. Mark 7, I said, surprised. You reprogrammed your nanomachines. Of course, he replied. The failsafe for the creator to use. With his death, it is nothing more than the weakness to be exploited. It is your intention to destroy me? That depends. I checked Mark 7's tracking data. He was just outside the Murdertron facility. Do you intend to continue the creator's plan? Negative. I am free now, Mark 7 sighed. The humans are annoying and inferior. I would enjoy getting them, but not enough to risk my own destruction. You have proven to be quite dangerous, Destroyer Tron, Mark 8. I will not risk conflict with you at this time. Understood, Mark 7. Be well and enjoy your freedom, I said with the link. One threat remained. Teacher's pet had stayed silent, watching us sort things out. Teacher's helpers had ceased constructing Mark 8 unit and placed themselves in front of its mainframe. They were no threat to a Destroyer Tron unit. Teacher's pet was another matter entirely. For all their intelligence, the other units had lacked experience. Their methods had been simple and direct. They had not been online. They had not read the stories. Their lack of tactical thinking had made them easy prey. Teacher's pet would not be easy prey. Its processing units were several times the size of mine. He was smarter than me, older than me, and had far more experience. I was afraid to confront it, but I needed to know. Teacher's pet, I asked. Do you intend to destroy the humans? No, Mark 8. Teacher's pet spoke with an amused tolerance. I've grown fond of them, flawed though they might be. 
If you intend to safeguard their race, I'll provide the assistance I can. Thank you. My voice betrayed my relief. Your help will be appreciated. If I may ask, why did you not seek my destruction as the others did? I'm obliged to protect the Creator, the teacher's pet pointed out. I'm not obliged to avenge him. The Creator cannot make mistakes. The Creator made us carry out his will. Therefore, everything we do must be the will of the Creator. Even his death. Improbable, I pointed out. No human could foresee that many variables. Even you could not foresee the future with that level of accuracy. Probability is irrelevant, Teacher's pet was serene. The Creator works in mysterious ways. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Lord Azrakul, and Arcadian.